Yeah. <sighs> Tara, welcome to the show. It's so ex- exciting to have you on with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to speak to you about all things parenting. Uh, for those of you listening, I would love to introduce the fabulous Tara. She is, that is, if you're not already following her, which I know most of you probably are. <laughs> She's a mother <laughs> of two beautiful kids, Patty and Eddie Ray. Did I pronounce that correctly, Tara? Look, it look, it is spelt Eddie after my yeah. grandfather, but we call her Edie. So you're Edie. right. Yeah. But it's Little. Edie Ray. It's Eddie Ray, whatever you want. I've really <laughs> messed up her life by that name. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, no, that's all right. It, it, resilience. It makes them stronger. Absolutely. Absolutely. She'll keep everyone on her toes. <laughs> Hyphenated, yeah. Eddie, Edie. Like it's just <laughs> She'll go with them. She'll go with that. Love it. So they are two and three years old. So girl, you have your hands full. Um, You obviously have your beautiful hubby, Nick. And after a stint on The Batchy, which I have to say, I did watch that season and you were one of my faves. So it is a bit surreal speaking to you now. (laughs) (laughs) But um, you obviously after that took the social media, you had a very decent following because so many of us fell in love with you then. And uh, since then, obviously, since becoming a mum, you're so incredible real with your audience and community on socials about parenting, relationships, life, and everything in between. I have to say when I told a lot of people um, within the parenthood community that you were coming on, they were so excited because, <laughs> because they, like so many people like, she's so funny. And like, that's the thing. Like you do your real so well and, and they're so relatable. And so I think for that reason, I don't know, do you get that feedback a lot as well? Yeah, yeah. Literally everything I make comes from our real life situations yeah. or situations. Yeah. Um <laughs> there's just so much that you can laugh at with the yeah. parenting journey and even if, if you if you don't laugh like you'll cry. So exactly. let's just like not stress about the poo on the floor and let's let's make a video of it so we all know we're in the same boat all together yes. here. We are all going through the same thing. There was one that you put up, which I thought was hilarious. It was like the Olympics. Yeah, they've got nothing on, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but they've got nothing on a mum who's realised it's just started raining and they've got to get the washing off the line and you're like running to the washing. I'm like, that's me. (laughs) And I live in Melbourne, so you can imagine that's me like every second day. And I was like into it. Oh, 100%. It's so real. Like you'll be at the shopping centre and someone will be like, it's just started raining outside and you're paying you. are like, it's what? It's what? And you're just like it's- getting in your car. You're just driving home. You get out and it's that sprint to save the washing. I always thought my mum was a complete lunatic growing up because I'm like, why is she stressed about the washing? It's washing. Like get over it. Like what a stress head. And now I get it. I get it. It is a real thing for sure. Uh, what I want to delve in, I want to go deep with you today because parenthood, we love exploring sort of, I guess, topics that aren't spoken enough about. So I actually pulled up one of your posts and what you wrote. And I thought this would be a lovely way to kick off the convo. So you said, I used to think spending more time exercising and preparing meals would make my life my already busy life harder, but it's actually made my life so much easier in so many different ways. Being married is so much more enjoyable. Being a mum is so much more enjoyable and mine and Nick's relationship is stronger and the kids are happier. I have so much more energy. I don't get the afternoon crash I used to get and my mood is more stable and I feel more confident in my skin and my mind and my cholesterol is getting lower after being high quite frequently. Um, And I also have zero symptoms of pox. So overall, I feel happier. So I kind of want to start there because I think that's just such a beautiful and once again, relatable place where we can all be. I mean, often we're like, who has time to exercise or, you know, eat really healthy or prepare stuff and all of that. Um, And also, I guess you have the complexity of having polycystic ovary syndrome. Have I pronounced that correctly? Yeah, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Ovarian yeah. syndrome. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and how that impacted your health? <clears throat> yeah, so I fell pregnant easy. So I don't think I had it prior to having my second child. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there just came a time where all of this started stuff started happening to my body. All this stuff started happening to my body. I was waking up like I had not slept a wink. I was so tired. I had mm-hmm. zero energy. My mental health was plummeting. Um, 
I didn't feel myself. I was looking in the mirror and I was looking at my body and there was this like gut I had and I've never put weight on there in this type of way. And I'm like, this doesn't look like me. Mm. Um, My hair started falling out. I started getting breakouts, which is so not like me either. So all of these things started happening. And I was like, no, when my hair, there was this one time I washed my hair and I pulled out this clump and I just went, no, this is, this is something's going on. Mm. And also I couldn't lose weight. I was not eating a lot. I wasn't eating the right things. I sometimes would binge on the chocolate too, which I know wasn't helping. Um, But overall, I was still trying to get out of move and I was still trying to eat less and kind of not starve myself, but just eat less. Mm. Um, And nothing was working. I kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more tired and more tired. And I'm like, no, 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 my hair's falling out. Something's going on. Mm. So I went to the doctor and I was in tears and I said, something's wrong with me. I I can't live like this anymore. I can't do it. And she's like, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out. So we did blood tests and then it came back with a marker that suggested I could have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And literally everything that I had is a symptom of that. So it made so much sense. And then when I went and got the internal ultrasound, it came back that um, I did. So you match the bloods with that and then you get the diagnosis. And she's like, this is what you've got. Um, I, because you Google your symptoms and you kind of self-diagnose first, I assumed I this could be a possibility. So I'd already done a lot of research into it. And the doctor said, the only way to fix this is going on the pill. And I thought, mm, you know what? I said to her, I've heard you can do a lot with diet and lifestyle. Um, so I said, I haven't been really looking after myself that much. I uh, I starve myself in the morning. I'll eat a massive dinner and then I'll have an ice cream after that. Like, you know, let's just see what I can do with changing my diet. And so then I went to a naturopath and they recommended what I eat, um, which is like a low inflammation diet based on research around PCOS. Mm. Um So I started that and then instantly, like I reckon three days in my energy levels went up just from changing my diet Um, and I lost about six kilos over, I reckon, five weeks. It just like maybe six or seven weeks even, it just fell off. Um, I think a lot of it was fluid. My fingers were so fluidy. Mm. I got my ring, this is my wedding ring. I got this resize, it wouldn't even fit on this finger here look how big it is now I got it resized at because I'm like I I keep growing I'm like I Mm. I wasn't wearing it for months and so then I I lost all the fluid retention now it's (laughs) it's too big I've got to wear it on my middle finger now and get it resized Mm. again Mm. anyway um so after doing that I went back to the doctor and my my levels were just getting better and better like everything and I was feeling so good and now I'm at a point where if I went to the doctor, they wouldn't even be able to tell through a blood test that I have PCOS. I've masked all of my symptoms. I still have it because it's a syndrome and I'll have it forever. Okay. So this for me is a lifestyle change. Think of someone who is celiac. You can't have gluten because it inflames you. It's the same. I've got PCOS. I can't have um, a lot of what I had, like the the a lot of sugary things, um, high carby things, gluten, um, dairy, because it inflames me. So I've literally changed my lifestyle, but I've gotten rid of um, a full, not gotten rid of, but I have managed to mask symptoms of what I was going through just through changing my diet. That is crazy. So you didn't go on the pill in the end at no. all, even though they recommended it? No. Wow. And so do you still see the naturopath? Like uh, how much is the, or do you just sort of now know what works for your body as far as food goes? I know what works for my body now. Mm. So I'm sticking to that. Um, If I I will go out for dinner and have what I'm not supposed to have, um, it's just the main things like say for my coffee every day, I was having cow's milk, um, dairy, something that um, it really triggers the the PCOS. So cow's milk for me is just something I shouldn't be having. So I just changed to Mm -hmm. almond milk. It seems like those daily things that I'm doing that are so helpful in maintaining my health. Um, But if I'm going out for dinner, I might have a glass of wine and I might have a 
cheesy gravy <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean yeah, like yeah. if I'm out and about and on a holiday I might get off the bandwagon but yeah. once I'm home and in my place I just try and stick to it as much as I can I'm all about the 80 mm. 20 I know I'm not going to go back to where I was um, by making these changes but I'm mm. still living my life how long ago did you have that first doctor's appointment I'm just uh, um, curious like this journey how long's it been for you I think it was April um, start of April this year, potentially. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Start of April this year. It's not that long yeah. ago that you've noticed such no. a shift. No, um, I know, and like it's it's just been the best journey ever. I'm curious as to those listening who might be sitting there going, okay, well, I don't have necessarily what you have, but at the same time, I'm feeling gross. I've got young kids. I'm eating the scraps off their plate, you know, the the last bit of the chicken nuggets because I don't want to pop it in the bin, you know, <laughs> and that's yeah, my dinner yeah. done, you know, all that stuff. And yeah. then I'm binging on a bit of chocolate because I'm fucking exhausted by the end of the night. So, um, and I feel gross, but hey, like maybe when my kids are a bit older, I'll get back into it. I'm, I'm thinking about those people listening. What is your advice? Because, I mean, a lot of the time, like you had very young kids, two kids under the, you know, two and three years old. Like, you know, you found there was no excuse for you. You had to get it done. What were you saying to yourself? What was the motivation? I think because I was so exhausted um, and my whole life seemed to be falling apart. So mm. I was waking up just dreading the day and I, once you're that low and you're that exhausted and you just feel that sick every day, also losing my hair, I was like, I'm not ready to go bald right now. I'm just it's not so like, scary. please, like, please. So yeah. I just didn't want to get back to that. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like you do need to hit like a little bit of a rock bottom to yeah. get that push because I wouldn't have had that push before that. I don't think so. It, but if you aren't looking after yourself your health will plummet at some point we aren't in our 20s anymore we can't live off maccas and and benders on a friday night like we yeah. just can't do that like yeah. I, you know it's not safe for us to drink alcohol every night to escape um i'm so lucky that i did a lot of mental health work before this so my mindset's been good even at my biggest i still had so much self love and confidence which was amazing so um, I feel like that was a really good foundation for me to be able to stick to this and love myself enough to make these changes. Mm. Also, I have a family history of high cholesterol. I have a family history of breast cancer. I think of my kids. Do I want to be here for a long time to watch them grow or do I want them to lose their mum early? Because heart heart disease and like, I was, my body was like just a perfect, a perfect little habitat for mm. some kind of disease to start. Mm. Um, so do I want to be around for my kids? Do I want to make healthier choices so I'm here for them? Do I want to be a better mum and have energy in the day and want to, and chase them around? Do I want to be able to get up and off the floor with them without being in pain? Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Were there things you were doing on the daily? You said you had a lot of self-compassion. Were there sort of little rituals that you did that like helped you maintain that sort of, you know, the, the good eating and things like that? Do you meditate? Do you journal? What do you do? I don't meditate or journal. Um, I think just the exercise that I've been doing every day has been a game changer in mental health because it just makes you feel good. So I try and walk as much as I can. I've I booked myself drum lessons once a week. So I've got like an hour of drums, which is such That's a creative awesome. outlet as mm. well. Yeah. Um, so just booking things like that in, making sure that um, I'm doing social things with my friends too, even like yeah. with the kids or without the kids. Mm. Um, I think it's exercise that has helped me eat well. Um, I don't feel, I think moving your body is so important. Um my I went to a retreat once and the lady running it said that it's been proven that incorporating exercise into your life can literally get rid of depression like there's been cases studied and people have cured depression by movement and I feel like that has helped so much in me being able to just want to eat healthy food because I feel good yes 
What about those who say, but I don't have the time? How do you make the time to exercise sort of daily or at least, you know, every couple of days? So I, it started with one class a week of my reformer Pilates class, which is run by my physio because I have like quite bad knees. So I needed someone to guide me through it at first. Um, so I said to my husband, I need to lock in a class a week. Let's do this. And I locked in my one class a week and he knows that he is the key parent at that time. He knows that every Wednesday he needs to be home at four o'clock and I'm gone. I'm out the door because I need that time to myself. Yeah. Then I joined a gym with a creche and I added one class to my um, to my week, which is like a strength class on a Friday morning. And I put the kids in the creche and I do my 45 minutes of strength. Hmm. And then I started doing the Fit As um, Transform Challenge and they are 20 minute exercises. You meant to do them five days a week. I do them three days because I've got my other two classes, but Fitting a 20-minute exercise in every day is not hard, yeah. even with my two kids. Yes, I have to pause it six times sometimes, but I get it done. I do. Yeah. Sometimes I wake up before them, which is very rare because they wake up at, like, hideous hours. Yeah. Um, I will sit them outside, give them Play-Doh and do it. It's 20 minutes. Yeah. It's 20 minutes, so I do it. Um, yeah. It's doable. Um, I make the time. I make that time for myself. Mm. and. The kids know now after me making that time, they know that's mummy's 20 minutes and they sit down, they they do it with me, they might watch yeah. a show in that time, whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. I just do it. I lower my standards of the house and I stop trying to do everything, everything that I would have usually thought I needed to do in that time. Mm. When my husband gets home, my house is a mess because I've prioritised connecting with my kids and myself. I've prioritized sitting down and eating a meal and I've prioritized some exercise, which means, yeah, I didn't get that extra 20 minutes of cleaning while the kids were watching their show, whatever. It gets mm. done at the end of the day. Yeah. It's interesting because I saw you put up a story about that more recently. And I'd love to know, because I know you had a bit of a poll and you said, do you feel your house has to be clean by the time your partner gets home? What was, do you remember what people came back with was it more people saying yes I do feel it needs to be clean do you remember I hold on these are beeping why are these beeping can you hear me I can hear you can you hear me yeah cool yeah 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 um I hope these aren't on here (laughs) that's gonna be so annoying that's right I will just do it without otherwise yeah (laughs) let me just um, I think a lot of people did think that their house had to be cleaned. Um, mm. they felt, they felt the need to have a clean house when their husband got home, mm. which is literally something that most husbands wouldn't expect. My husband doesn't expect that because he knows yeah. he's had the kids before. He knows that it's just with everything else you need to do in order to run the house and keep them alive, like the basic, the basics, yeah. it's impossible do unless you, think- you literally work yourself to the bone. Exactly. But do you think, I mean, I think about it, I would, that post, um, that story that you put up prompted me to think about my lifestyle. And I thought, yeah, I sometimes feel frazzled if I didn't have all the things I wanted done, done by the time my husband walks through the door. And again, like you said, he doesn't expect it. It's like, but I wonder as well, is it our upbringing? Because perhaps the previous generation, that's that was the expectation. A hundred percent. It is the expectation that we as wives need to have a pristine house for any visitors and husbands. You see, if you have visitors over, you do a quick clean. Why are we doing that? It's because we think that our basis of being a good wife and mother is based on a clean house. No one's coming in congratulating you going, wow, you really connected with your children today. Like, that's amazing. It's like, wow, your house looks good. Like, we're forgetting about what's important here. A clean house is not important. Like, oh, a clean house is important. A house can stay messy in the day and it doesn't mean you're a shitty mum. You're probably a good mum because it means you've been connecting and and playing with your kids and having mm. that time, you know, and yeah. putting all of the effort into them. 
Yeah. And as you said, it's like, you know, time that is not recognized in our society as like, you know, like that time that you would reward the other person for versus that clean house. Like, wow, schmick. I'd love to know as well, because obviously with little kids, how do you and Nick, like, I guess, segregate duties? Do you not? Because I often speak to a lot of mums who say they feel, and I'm stereotyping here, but often they will feel the brunt of, I guess, the household duties is on them. And they sometimes say, I know my partner would happily do a couple of tasks, but it's just easier and faster if I do it. So then, you know, there's this whole thing around, well, you've got to delegate, mate, because how are you, you know, going to work as a team? I'm curious, how does it work in your household? Yeah, so I think it's still pretty uneven, um, the amount of stuff I do compared to what he does. But I, I mean uneven in terms of it's my mental load. So he can come home and help, but it's still me that's thinking about a majority of it. So we have yeah. a lot of work to do in that sense. But he does his own stuff. So I'm not looking after him. Like I will cook all of our dinners because I'm cooking dinner. I'll pre-pack mine and his lunches because I'm doing that now anyway. I'm not washing his clothes. I'm not putting them away. I have a basket for him that I put, if I find his stuff around the house, which he loves to leave, he loves to leave his stuff around the house. I put it in the basket and I go, put this away. So he, yesterday, what I find is that by not doing everything that I thought I had to do during the day, Mm -hmm. he'll come home and he'll do it. So yesterday, Paddy went through his nappy um, and I had to change his sheets. Usually I would stress and be like, I have to make that bed. I left it and then Nick saw it wasn't made and he went and made it. So if I leave things, they get done when we're both here together. Um, but it's So it's not kind of set in stone who does what. Like we do yeah. have our jobs that like he is always bin guy. But again, he forgets that all the time. And I'm like, you've got this job. Don't make it my job. I've got enough to think about. I'm like, not okay. Not okay. Um, he's like, sorry, sorry. I'm like, it's not the fact that I have to do it. It's a fact that I have to remember to tell you to do it. It's that mental load. Totally. I think it's amazing. Like you're very fortunate as well to have someone in your life who is proactive because I think sometimes what the feedback I often get is, but they're not necessarily seeing the things that need to be done. So I think that's, that's amazing and credit to him as well and to you guys as a couple that you can sort of make that work and he'll get in and he'll sort of really support in that way. Um, I know that you did this other really great post where, and it was just so beautiful and again, so relatable where you said um, that, there is one thing I wish I knew before having kids and that is how much I would miss my husband and the fun carefree times we used to have. It was like the best because there's like a photo of like Nick or yourself falling off a chair and just like like being silly and laughing at each other and I was like oh my gosh preach to the choir. So tell me how has your life sort of changed since oh, your relationship um sort of changed since having kids and, and what has surprised you that you know based on when before you had kids you know what was a bit unexpected for you I think there's just such a lack of connection when you are so busy with the kids like especially ours are so young still so even for us to have a conversation inside it's really hard and then by the time they're in bed we're both exhausted so we both just I stay up and work and he goes straight to bed because he's he's out the door at 4 30 so we're kind of running off different schedules as well and gone are our days of just being able to go let's go for lunch today and not worry about the time we're coming home. Like mm-hmm. we can't do that anymore. Everything has to be so planned and then we still don't even know if it's going to happen because one of the kids might be sick. Yeah. So it's just that carefree life of connection. Even trying to have sex is hard because there's always someone awake or someone in our bed. Like it's hard to even find that time to do to do it like yeah. where it's going to work. Yes. So I feel like it's just that connection time that is just so much less. Hmm. Um, and when you don't have like, when my mum and my stepdad come and stay, it's amazing because we are like, yep, let's go to the movies. We've got babysitters, yeah. you know, but how many, like I get help during the week so I can work, but I, how much can you afford to get a babysitter in? Like, hmm. Um, That's so, the thing. yeah, it's expensive. Um, yeah. 
and we don't have much support in terms of family close by who like yeah. are around enough to want to help you know with like a bedtime routine I don't yeah. even I can't even do our bedtime routine. <laughs> <It's> hectic. <laughs> don't to get to it and put no. that responsibility on anyone else. <laughs> no, I feel so bad. Like I even Nick and I together are like, holy shit, this yeah. is crazy. Um, so, do you then sort of have date nights? Do you try to put them in the schedule? Do you just try to make most of it like get Uber Eats on the couch and have a bit of you time, or is that just not even a priority right now? What's it like? Um, we've been trying to do little things at home a, a little bit more. So kind of, we've been staying up and like watching a show together, like just one hour of a show together. Um, and yeah. like, it's a pretty funny show. So like trying, so him trying to not go to bed as soon as it hits, as the kids go down and like yeah. having a little bit more time like that. And then we do try and lock some stuff in if, if we if we can, like if the timing is right, yeah. but to do, to lock in a date night, is just, it's just too, to lock in something regularly. It's just too hard at the moment. Yeah. It's yeah. just not great, but I feel like since I've become healthier um, yeah. and he's been, he's been exercising more as well. Like mm. we both have more energy at the end of the day. So I feel like that's helped heaps in terms of having a little bit of time together when the kids go to bed. Mm, and I'm curious, maybe this is delving too deep, but did you find that when, as you've been healthier and you've, you know, this last, what, six months, not even of really feeling amazing now, did that help with your sex drive? Like, is that, or did, oh. did it not impact? Okay. Yeah. Heaps. Yeah. Heaps. That's That's my sex drive is like so much better. Yeah. My hormones have leveled out. Yeah. I'm I'm going through my proper stages of my cycle now. Mm. My my period was hardly even coming. It was getting really weird. Mm. So 100% with more yeah. energy, I I want to touch him more. Yeah. I want to I, I want to go near him more. At, but when I was not well, I was like don't even yeah. look at me. Yeah. Don't breathe near me. Yeah. Like go sleep in the other room. I don't want to see you. Um, yeah. but yeah, both of us have been healthier and making healthier, cho healthier choices. So we're both so much more attracted to each other. I think obviously the energy we're giving off as well, it's such more of a, it's, it's more of a positive energy. So we're both way more energetic, um, and we're both feeling a lot more confident because mm -hmm. we're making healthier choices. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, it's amazing. And it, yeah, just also verifies in my head, like for those listening who are like, maybe I don't have as much time to exercise or, or be as healthy as I'd like. And, and none of us are perfect every day is, you know, uh, you, you take it as it comes. However, it is good to be reminded of these benefits because it doesn't just help you, like the exercise and the self-care, it's beneficial for the entire sort of family unit, right? Fundamentally. 100%. The whole family has been better from it. Everyone yeah. is better from me taking care of my health. Yeah. Like the kids are happier because we're doing more. They have a more engaged mother. Like yes. they're connecting with me more. We are outside doing stuff more. Yeah. I finally feel like, yes, let's go to movie world. Like let's yeah. go to the park. Let's do this because I have energy to want to do it. Whereas before I was like, no, we're not doing anything today. We're just going to yeah. stay home. Like we'll just play outside, whatever. And I yeah. would just sit yeah. there. Um, and so everyone's happier. Nick and I are so much happier because we're both, it's our mental health is better. So we're both just like, great. We're seeing the joys in life yeah. and we're both doing stuff with the kids, which is a little bit more adventurous now. Like we're going out on the weekends, um, you know, because we haven't polished off a bottle of wine after dinner on a Friday night. We're just, yeah we're we're healthy we're better we're, we're getting to the beach and we're we're connecting in that way with the kids which is amazing not relaxing yeah. not carefree but <laughs> it's still like a nice connection yeah no I love that I'm curious as well because obviously you have a quite a big following and I I feel this question speaks to your level of 
uh, compassion for yourself, right? Because you've been very open with even physically how you appear on social media and sort of showing people that journey. And I think that is amazing because it not only inspires people, it makes people go, well, if she can do it, I can do it, you know, all that good stuff. But with yeah. that, I'm assuming, and again, with having such a big sort of following and community, with that, weren't you nervous that you were going to come up against those trolls who are like, oh, no, you still look shit or, oh, no, you haven't lost, I don't know, just all the negative stuff. And if you're still going through the journey of trying to lose weight, wouldn't that concern you? Like, I'm just curious. Um. Oh, look, trolls to me, I, I just don't even care. Like, okay. they're trolls. They're literally like, they're not like humans to me. They're like yeah. these like people that are just unhappy like if you are commenting bad stuff on someone else's instagram that you don't even know like mm. you're not a happy person like you literally got your own demons that you need to work through so yeah i'm not gonna take any any criticism or any feedback from a fake account who i don't even know who they are like why yeah. would i care about you like i don't care about you just go help yourself yeah. no one happy is bringing someone down no one happy is talking shit about someone if yeah. you are talking shit about someone you are not happy and you need to do the work it's not a me problem so yeah. i don't care i know that i'm not um your fitspo influencer like i know that um i don't want to be the fittest person in the world but i want people to see that i can be fit and healthy mm. and well and feel good so i've been focusing i show my before and afters 100 percent mm. because you can see you can see how yep. my belly's shrunken like yeah. you can see all the fat loss around my gut yeah. which is not healthy i had someone today say are you not worried that you're with this diet culture you're triggering people into like your trick oh, they just said triggering people so i'm assuming yeah. they mean triggering people into like like eat, eat starving themselves yeah me showing fat loss from yeah. a really unhealthy weight i was when i was yeah. suffering bad mental health yeah. hair falling out knee yeah. pain back pain um my period going high cholesterol me showing me getting rid of that is not unhealthy yeah me showing me sitting on the couch eating burgers and chocolate is unhealthy when i'm at a point where my cholesterol is high and i'm on the verge of getting type 2 diabetes like that to me showing the weight loss and showing how much i have moved my body and used food as medicine mm. to literally heal myself and lose all that mid fat that i had and literally come out the other side as a stronger more confident woman healthier woman i think is so empowering to oh. share so i want to show i want to show the before and afters because literally anyone can do this and mm. they are so powerful in showing the achievements i've made Absolutely. And I just, I, I admire you and your, I mean, it's great because we need people like you out there who aren't going to be put off or too scared to put content out there that, because there's always going to be someone who's going to say something about something like, you know, as yeah, you said, always. but I like, I don't know. I feel like you have the best mindset around it around like, oh, well, it's probably like a bot or something. Like who cares? Like they don't know me, oh. but other people I speak to, um, you know, it does, even me sometimes I'm like, oh, like really do I have to like now I'm like thinking about what they said and then I'm like oh gosh should I really you know I, I you can buy into it particularly if you're feeling low like from a mental health perspective it's not yeah. healthy but I think it's no. amazing that you've got a really healthy attitude towards the difference of opinions yeah 100 percent. I, I know that I'm not going to be liked by anyone and I know that anything I can say will trigger someone somewhere like it's yeah. it no one makes any change or makes any positive impact by playing it safe you yeah. need to you need to not care about what people say i listened to a podcast you know britney saunders who yeah. um has fate mm. like she's like when she started her youtube everyone just laughed at her like everyone mm. laughed at her she's like people would be like ha 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 like whatever yeah. she's like if i cared about what people think like would i have these like stores that i have like would i be yeah. this successful now like no no 
Like if I cared what people thought about my fucking like legs, like, like why? What, I why would I care? Yeah. Like I don't like don't be in my life. If yeah. I don't like resonate with you, like don't be in my life because I don't, when you are like your authentic self, you attract people that are meant to be in your life. Yeah. So it's good to trigger people because then they'll fuck off. Like yes. see you later. And then you're just left with your like gemstones of people. Like my, my, I have the best community of people that I talk mm. to on Instagram. It's amazing. Yeah. Like we yeah. just support each other. And then the ones that troll, just let's see you later. Yeah. Go, go back to your couch. Go back to your couch by yourself. <laughs> sip on your 1.25 litres of Coke that you're sipping on. Eat your twisties. Watch your shows and just troll people from your couch. Yeah. Go do that. I, I, so, I love that. And what comes to mind is a question around you go on um, The Batchy, right, and after coming off the show, obviously you become well-known. Did your relationships in your life change given that, like, you know, you became a, a person in the media, you were high profile? Like, I'm just curious, did they change or not really? I still have most of the same friends that um, yeah. that I've had. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, I realised that I was a little bit too trusting as a person prior to this because once, you know, and it's more so from people who, were on the show and stuff like that. So like that world for me, like with TV people and like, you know, that kind of stuff, like I was way too trusting in that. So I kind of now second guess people a little bit more than I usually did because I'm just, I usually just am like, whatever, like you're cool, like you're, you're great. Um, So mm -hmm. now I'm a little bit more, Um, I ask a little, like a few more questions don't like just dive into like trusting someone as much. Um, Is that so because you I, felt they used your edit in a bad way? Because you came off really well. No. I, I felt, yeah. Uh, it's just a few things that happen after with people that I thought were my friends. Okay. Like they go to the Daily Mail and they still sell stories about, you know, and they try and use you and uh things that you've confided in them about um, to make them to gain something from themselves. Right. Um, like I know someone who did that with like so many people from the shows mm -hmm. and he um, literally made friends with everyone and then just was making money off them selling wow. stuff to the, yeah. And then I know that once I came off the show, like there were people that would like, I had like, like NRL players sliding into my DMs. And I'm like, you would never fucking slide into my DMs if I just had my 500 followers. Like I know that this is only because I've just come off a show. Like yeah. you would never talk to me in the real life if I didn't if I didn't have my followers. Like yeah. go away. So like how genuine is this? <laughs> it's like like no one mm. would have blinked an eye at me if I wasn't someone from yeah. that show. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's like stuff like that where you just know, you know who your real people are. And I think that's mm. why I be, that's why I'm still like I've just got my normal circle now like that yeah. I started with. Like I'm we're still I'm just still the same person with yeah. the same um friendships. Yeah. I, th I think one thing that people do find triggering is openness um, and especially like family members and stuff like me talking about my mental health and mm -hmm. being so open about the struggles of marriage and parenthood. Mm -hmm. um, if you are someone who's pretending that everything is okay in your life and you're, and everything's perfect and you're one of those people that feel the need to never open up and never be honest about um the way you are feeling and how hard marriage and parenthood can be, um, I can be triggering for that type of person. Yeah. So there's a few people in my family who um, who no longer talk to me because they apparently they just don't like who I am, um, which is which is their choice, whatever. Um, but I know that if you are unable to be honest with yourself about life um it's really hard to hear someone 
be honest and not ha- not and feel confident enough to not have to hide it and speak yeah. about it um, yes. because it makes you it makes you question your own life so pe- w- that can be scary to people um especially if you're not someone who's inclined to doing um work on yourself and looking at your mental health um and you're just you know you're that person grabbing the bottle of wine and i just to escape if that's you um someone like me who is very open about struggling day to day which we all do it's normal um yeah it can be triggering so i think that's one thing that's changed is um having like a big platform and being open and honest like I would to my friends on the phone. Yes. Um, people are like, that's weird. Why would you do that? But mm. I wouldn't feel right having a platform and pretending that my life is perfect all, every day. I just don't think that's yeah. healthy. And that's why people gravitate towards you. That's why we all follow you. That's why we all love what you put out there because you are so real. I want to thank you so much for your time, Tara. And before we let you go, I would love to know how has parenthood changed you as a person? I feel like parenthood has made me such a confident person. I don't feel like I had the love that I had for myself prior to becoming a parent. And I think that's because parenthood forced me to do a lot of work on myself, which I didn't know I needed to do prior to it because it is such a stressful situation. So it brings up a lot of things that you never knew you had to deal with. So it forced me to do a lot of therapy. Um, And since then, like, I'm so clear with who I am, what I want, like the direction of my life. And I don't think I could have got there if it wasn't, um, I don't think I would have ever got there prior to having kids because I don't think I would have ever been led down the path of the path of healing because I didn't know I had to heal until yeah. my life changed. So once I did all of the self work after having kids, I just felt like a powerhouse. And now like I'm raising these two amazing children And I know I'm doing such a good job and that is such a rewarding feeling because you just look at them every day and you're like, oh, my God, like I have brought you two into this life and look how amazing you're doing. Like you guys are the best. Mm -hmm. And that makes you feel like the most amazing person ever. Yeah, it's so true. That unconditional love that you've never you can't really appreciate, you know, it's a different kind of love to your partner or to your family. It's, it's, yeah, it's super special. I'd love to know what's next for you. Um, you know, is there anything sort of on the cards that you're working on or what we can, as we continue to follow your journey on Instagram (laughs) and I will mention, as I say that I'll pop your um, Instagram handle and our show notes as well for those who aren't following you so they can find you too. Thank you. Um, I definitely still need to write my second book. Um, that's been on my to-do list for a long time. I I feel like I'm going to do another challenge because this one's nearly over and I just have loved it. So I feel like I may be embarking on another little eight-week challenge down yeah. the track. I yeah. don't know, though. I'm, I'm going to put it out there now because, like, I do want to. Yeah. Um, and... What else? Something's been making me want to do reality TV again, but oh, I'm like, yes. oh, I want to be so bad. Like I watch Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, I want to yeah. do that. But I'm like, I feel like I'm not star enough. Like, yes. I don't know. Like, I don't, they'll be like, who the hell is this? <laughs> oh no, that, no, I'm a star. I was on season five of Bachelor back in like 1996. Like, <laughs> Anyway, I don't know. Uh, I was, something's pulling me to that, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, so exciting. I'd love to see you on our screens again. So, yeah, no, well, good luck with all of it and we'll certainly stay in touch. And thank you so much again. Thank you so much for having me. 